Hello, coaches. Welcome to day three of the Dribble Drive Motion Challenge. Today, we're going to be talking about creating a, creating gaps and attacking uh, off the bounce, creating gaps, some sets for you as well to helpful, hopefully get you to the rim and get you downhill. Let us know in the chat. Hear where you're tuning in from. Uh, let us know before we get started here. Let's see what do we got. Got the real Coach K from upstate New York. Not that phony Coach. guy, from Duke. Not the phony guy from Duke. We got the we real guy. Coach Carker will give him a bypass. He's a, he's one of our guys that comes on all the time. Sent me a message today. Shout out to Coach Carker. Going, I missed it yesterday. I almost I almost fainted because Coach Carker never misses. Coach. <laughs> I almost fainted that he needed the replay access because he doesn't miss, but he had a good excuse. He was, he was um, doing something for the school cross country meet. He was like the timer or something. So he got home late. Yeah. Patrick, uh, so Kansas, he, baby, and over. Love it. He's back. Patrick War McWhorter's back for night three. Coach Howell's back. Good to see you, coach. Got a lot of girls, girls coaches tuning into the challenge. I'm loving it. Um, you're gonna be in a treat tonight. We got sets, we got some video, and we're gonna have, hopefully be able to take some questions for you guys to finish up the three day challenge. Kurt, you got a, anything before we, we bring up the slides and get into it? You want to? No, just I can just review. You know, we, we went from the basics and philosophy to, to, to you know, last night talking, um, uh, trying to take it to the next step a little bit. And now tonight, it's it's you've got the basics down and and um. We're ready to give you some gap stuff, which is kind of the, the, the really the, the, the stuff that will help your players and help you kind of take it to the next level. Let me get it in present mode here, guys. All right. So let me send out. There we go. All right. So we're good. Got that. Yeah. We're rolling. Kurt, let them know real briefly. We've done this for two nights, but some nights, but we might have some new people that don't really know who we are. So we're going to briefly tonight go over who we are. Yep. I'm at Clackamas Community College now after being in high school for a while, um, a long while. I actually got one of those LinkedIn uh, work anniversary things today. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, but uh, at Oregon City is where I, I, I was able to, to have some success coaching wise. Uh, and then. Um, Moving on, I'm at the community college just right across the street. I love it. It's a great level for me at the point of my career uh, that I'm at. I'm able to work with kids and kind of help them go from young adults to, to real full-scale adults, but still running dribble drive like crazy. Been on it for 2000, since 2005, and then uh, there's no plan B after about 2013. So I love it. Love sharing. Love talking to you guys. And, and there's a Twitter handle for you if you want to follow on there. If you go back in the archives of that, you've got all my 60 seconds with KG stuff. You've got some of my late, later ones. In COVID, it was a little harder to do my little things, but just uh, check out there and see what you like. And then also go to my YouTube on Clackamas Community um, uh, Women's Basketball YouTube. There's a lot of great clips on there. And then System Basketball with Mark's got a ton of stuff too. All right, guys. A little bit about me. Uh Oh, where'd I go? There we go. Let's. All right. About me, um, you can follow me at Coach Mark Hart on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. A lot of you already follow me. Daily X's and O's there. So some of the stuff I'm going to show tonight is on those social profiles. So I usually try to do a play or something daily, if not a few each week. Again, System Basketball YouTube. Started system basketball in March 2020. Um, I've been a high school basketball coach for the last 25 years, making the switch after coaching boys for 25 years and being a head coach for the last 19 years. I'll be an assistant uh, girls coach this year um, at at one of the top divisions in the top in the top division in the state. So I will be it at, um, haven't really said where I'm going to be. At. I'm going to be at Corona Eastville. So that's where I'm going to be at. So, um, been running dribble drive since 2008 and that's a little bit about me. So we're going to go back here and 
we are going to there we uh, go. advance oh. the slides here a little bit, get off the bios. There we go. You want to take that, Kurt? Uh, nothing's up on the screen, just me and you, Coach. Okay, so let me go back to remove, add to stream. There we go. Okay, our, our goal of, of, of day three is really to get you to, to understand that, that just coming down and dribble drive isn't always going to get you there. You're going to use little actions, and we, we talk, we're going to talk about some, some different little movements, whether it's player movement, ball movement, or cuts to create bigger gaps. And remember, we talked about single gap, double gap, triple gap the other night. And we're going to really give you opportunities tonight to watch some different strategies. And remember, always make make your offense your own. I think some of the stuff we're going to show is really good. You may have a better five player or one player and start tweaking those things for them. But we're going to show you some actions now to create double and triple gaps to get the offense started, to get guys to the rack and get guys into – Pink touches, and I've talked about that a couple times in the last couple nights, is your goal in dribble drive really is pink touches. The goal, you know, like I, I, I talked about being at Coaching You with Nick Nurse, and he asked what the number one thing their offense is trying to do. And he looked around the gym, and I raised my hand. I said paint touches, and he said bingo. And so it's at every level. If we can get paint touches, whether that's, you know, entries to whatever, but for us in dribble drive, we're talking about dribble penetration and – you know, getting guys in there to, to create shots for them, kickouts, long closeouts, and all that kind of stuff. All right. But so again, the, the, the three kind of ways that we look at it, and there's there's we, we, we can move players. We can you could take alignment. You could get into different uh, alignments to move guys. You can. You can loop a player through, which means, and again, you'll see this in the illustrations where we're taking a player and cutting them through the nail area, whether that's to the deep corner or whether just to replace the player. Um, there's a through cut. That would be, for me, I call that arrow. So, again, you're learning some different words. Uh, mark through cuts. That's kind of the Wahlberg term where you're going to take a player and cut them all the way to the corner. Isolations. We're going to isolate a player to start the offense. I think this is something that early on in my dribble drive, I did very little of. As I move through my dribble live evolution, I use isolations all the time now. And, and it's not just get out of my way, iso ball. It's really just to, to give a player a two-way drive and go different directions. We can move the ball. And again, I'm a swing, swing, attack, dribble drive guy. If you remember Vance, he was attack, attack, AA swing or skip, excuse me, attack, attack. I'm swing it, swing it, attack, swing it, swing it, attack, penetrate, pass, pass. That's kind of my philosophy now. And then you've got combinations where we can add in all the things because coaches always go, well, wow, what if I want a ball screen? That's great. That's awesome. You can incorporate ball screens into some of these things to get gaps. You can use cuts and combos of ball movement and player movement. And then, of course, your favorite special. We, I, I'm a big believer in – don't throw out everything if you're going dribble drive. Don't take your favorite set play and go, I can't ever run it now because I'm going dribble drive. I think you could still combo it. You just have to understand how it can flow into your dribble drive alignment. Okay. Just to go over just some quick terminology, and Mark's got some great uh, Luceo um, uh, animation with a lot of these things, but just to kind of – understand first of all in a two guard front which is dribble drive you've got to be able to move oftentimes one of those offensive players out of the way to create a bigger gap so in that first slide to your left you can see a quick little one to five pass that to me is a nail cut mark uses the term loop cut um, just simply you're creating a gap for now um, and I, I i'm just on me now coach just so you know yep um, i got it i did it on purpose no problem. <laughs> you've got you've got a little loop that goes through, and now you're you're going to give your player a double, almost a two and a half triple gap there, driving downhill. Because a lot of times in a two guard front, you've got the other defender getting in the way, so you've got a little action. So that's a quick pass and player movement. I call that a nail cut because the kids are going through the nail and then exiting out. Okay. 
Again, oftentimes, if you look at that diagram in the right, coaches, that's a, that's a great way for, for us to start the offense. Here's a through you cut. It, yep. Did you want it back on the other screen? Or are you good? I'm good. I'm totally good. Okay. Yep. So in this case, it's just a through cut. So this might be a five through call. And this is what Mark loves a lot. He runs this with his guys a ton. I think he's got a clip for us later on. This is simply, again, X5, jam in the nail. It's an important concept, coaches, that in whatever offense you run, that you understand how they're guarding the nail. Do you have to nail defender that you need to move? It's a concept that I borrowed from the NBA. I, I heard it. Somebody mentioned it in a Zoom maybe a couple of years ago in COVID. We always got to move the nail. We got to move the nail. And in dribble drive, this is one way to move the nail. You got the loop cut. Now you've got a second way here with a through cut. And again, you can see now you've got your one guard in a single guard front, one guard front attacking the paint. And now, again, the movements that we showed you the other day, four might relocate once it breaks the midline. Three is patient in the corner. Might be a back door, might be a lift, could be a lot of things. Here's one that, I again, I talked about isolations, guys. Um I, I, I don't be scared of ISOs. I think to me, ISOs was a bad word when I first was doing dribble drive. It's like, no, we got to flow. We got to move it. And I realized that, you know what? Sometimes we've got a really good player that we just want to get into a two-way drive. So if you look at that first slide on the left, all I'm doing is push it two, which is a Wahlberg zone concept. And I'm just letting one go. We're just going to let one get the whole right side of the floor and go. Now, let's say I wanted one to be on the left side. You could just flip it. That's all those two things are. And you can do this with any of your perimeter players. You can throw it to the five and get out of the way and let them ISO. What I found over the years is it's allowed us to collapse the defense. It's allowed us to get a touch. When I've gone to shot clock at the college level, um, it gets us into paint touches quicker sometimes, especially against the team that is – pack lining us, sagging and switching, ultimately, you know, just, just an ISO with your best player is not a bad way to start the offense. Here's another version of the same thing with what a lot of people call a loop out of the corner. You know, we might might just, just run that like a zipper loop or whatever that might be, but you're going to push two to the top. Five runs a through cut, and there's a couple options at the end. So these, again, just little examples of cuts where we're pushing a player out either to the weak side or the top side. And, again, on the far right slide, you can see that could end up being a sprint into a ball screen. And Mark and I were talking a little ball screen prior. I think you really need to look closely at your film, coaches, if you're a ball screen in your offense, about how effective are your ball screens. Are you getting people to go over the top? 75% of the time. If not, you probably need to talk about angles on your ball screen. But in this case, you two pops to the top. It could be an ISO. It could be a sprint to a ball screen. And you can see now the two catches, and they've got a triple gap essentially from that right slot to drive to the rim. Four would roll down. If you're a five-out guy, four might pop, pick and pop in that case. Uh, this is kind of goes to the bread and butter of the KG offense right here. This is one of my uh, – actually, two of my favorites. If you look us up on uh, um, our YouTube channel, you're going to see rocket cuts and wave cuts. So the corner cut is, is my special set, rocket. And really what you're doing there is against the team that sags, switches, ball movement. It's a 1-5-3 with deep cuts where the three gets an ISO at the end there, essentially a triple gap from the left wing. And again, the two would lift a little in that left slide and give, give one a little bit of space in the right side there. And Mark's got some video on wave a little bit later, uh, the wave cut again, another bread and butter play for us. One, five, three, we get a wave cut and just a little tip here. This is a bonus. You know, Mark's going to Venmo me a buck later for this one. That's a great zone entry. It is a terrific zone entry on the right there. That's the wave cut where we, we double wave the guy out and we get three. And, again, you've got three going downhill with two in that deep corner. It's a triple cut. But that's another – that's a great one. You might want to make a note of that, coaches. All right. 
What do we got? I'm waiting for the Venmo to come right now, Mark. A kick ahead <laughs> flow. <laughs> this, this got is a little. Uh, I'm multitasking a little too much. I, I, I can't do the kidding. third thing. I know. I know. Mark. Mark is running the show here, and he's doing awesome. All I get to do is talk. So, <laughs> and my wife will tell you I'm pretty good at that. Um, you know, again, here we have a one to two action, and for me, I'd call that an arrow cut. I've I've passed it to the two, past half court, and and again. Email me. I'll talk about my rules. But if I pass it to two past half court, I'm probably going to cut away. So here we have a one to two. The two immediately swings it to five, five to three. Five runs a wave action. And now, you again, same play, same action. But now we kind of tweaked it a little bit. And, again, I've got some little rules there on the side as far as .5, shoot it, attack with it, or pass it. You know, we the, the, the triple threat is your last resort. I really, I really think that in modern offense, the triple threat, catch, hold, jab, jab, jab is reserved for just a few times in your offense, maybe twice in an in a 80 possession game. And there's times when, and again, I've got a little bullet note there that, you know, the, the ball gets stuck. These are, that's when this action happens. When you're playing great on a dribble drive night, kids are moving it. You don't have a problem. You probably only call five or 10 actions, but when you're, you know, you feel it, they're not moving. This is where you can swing, swing, attack. You know teams are switching, sagging. This is when you're going to use stuff like this. Um, threw that up because a year ago, me and Kurt did the cor started the course, and he's talking about flowing ahead here. We have a great video on System Basketball YouTube channel on how to flow and to dribble drive. So if you subscribe to the channel – and you look up how to flow into dribble drive. If you're in the Facebook group right now, you can go do that later. Also, if you're in the watching on YouTube, you can search for that. But that was one of the pre-course, pre-videos that we did prior to our 12-chapter course that we talked about last night with you guys. Okay. Do you want to do your game film and then I'll uh, you do know, mine? Mark, I don't know. It's really up to you. Look at the timing. We're at about 520. I could show a couple clips. I don't have to go through all of it. But, you know, I, it was it was just some of the clips that I've got posted on my YouTube. I, I put it in there. If I I don't know if I can click on it. Am I okay to click on it? Or you want it? You got it. Okay. Well, if you want to if you want to control it, I can stop sharing. You can bring it up if you want okay. to do it that way. Do you want to do that? Sure. There Let you me. go. So now you hit share screen and find it on your Chrome tab. Yeah, let me make sure I'm on that Chrome tab right away so it's there. No problem. And I come there and share, share screen, Chrome tab. Now that's pretty easy, isn't it? It's You're getting pro. <laughs> yes, there's game film. Okay. And I think if I go to present mode, that's better. Is that better for everybody? Can everybody see that? Uh, Mark, is that a yes? Um, I got to add it to the stream. There we go. Okay. Are you seeing it okay? It says game film. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, again, just, more just more I'll more. go through two or three clips and stuff, and you're going to see some unique things, you know, some stuff from, from a team that, again, remember, I'm in a two-year situation than I was in high school when I was in an eight-year situation from fifth grade on up. But at the same time, obviously, we have talented kids. You know, two or three of those kids I coached in high school and recruited over to the college. So, you know, they know the system. They know how to play. So let's go ahead and get in here. Just a minute worth of stuff. I think this was my plan through the trailer stuff. So here we've got just to start, and we go a one to five to three. Now, right there, again, all I'm doing there, no, notice the defense. They're packed in. They're established. They're set. So, again, just, just going back. Here we go. We, we're, we're looking up. The point guard has it. And we, we've seen a, a pretty established D. Now, the one lets it go early. I would call that a 500 early. One to five. Mark uses different terminology. He's more Wahlbergish with a 153, 153. So just be aware. Language is, is important. Use your own. So the ball moves. The ball moves. Okay. Now we get a cut. We get a little corner, like wavish, rocketish cut. We're just playing at this point. So now we get a downhill drive. Off the rear end of a player. Again, she didn't have a drive. She kind of pitches it back. It's a negative pass. But remember the other night we talked about sometimes those happen. 
Now, the negative pass was to our best player, so I'm never going to complain there. All of us know who our best players are. Having them with the ball in their hands is not a bad thing. So now we get a cut and another movement. Oh, boy, what happened there? Sorry, guys. Apologize for that. Let me go ahead to where we were at. So now we're here. Okay. And now that player is going to move it again. 0.5 decision making. We're moving the ball quickly, shifting the defense. So now we go here. And now, again, you can see we've got movement. It's not perfect. We've got a player that's coming to the ball side that probably shouldn't, but we're okay. Now we're going to move it again. And now we get an automatic cut. And you see you have a baseline clear player. That's a through cut. And now we're going to go ahead and attack the paint. And normally that player, again, I apologize there. I keep hitting that one thing. But now you can see here, normally it's a relocate there, coaches. If you can look at our big down there, she kind of gets stuck. She's our least athletic big, and that's a nice comment. She's a really great post-up kid, but probably doesn't move side to side as well. So now we're going to go ahead and get a little dump, though, because they were slow to react. A pretty simple, basic action. The key to that possession was quick ball movement, and every time we passed it, we cut. So now here we're going to go one to five, and now that's just a simple through cut, and our best player has it. Now notice the in-out move there, coaches. And I'll go back just a tiny bit to 21 seconds. Again, when you're teaching straight line moves, You've got a dominant right-handed driver who very simply in and out skip. And again, we've got a big that kind of got in the way. Now we're moving. Paint touch, attack. Dribble into a post up. Very comfortable with her feet. Two foot finish. That kid has come a long way. Again, coaches teaching your players to finish off two is huge. So now we have a kick ahead. And again, I keep hitting the same thing. It's it's kind of right by where I – okay, let me go to here. So there's that. There's that finish. We'll go through quickly on that one. There's your two-foot finish. Step through. And coming down the floor, we get a kick ahead. Baseline drive. Now, normally our post is not going to be ball side. She must have read defense behind. We always give them the green light if they feel like they have an advantage. So we've got a baseline drive here. Now, it, it, it does that over and over again. It's it's right there. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. It's, it's for some reason a little twitchy there. So we go here, baseline drive. And again, we've got into the Nash zone. Notice the post there. She's in the wrong spot. She should try to get teed up. I think she thought she was ball side, and, and she was, and kind of tried to come behind it. But we're going to play. And now we were able to make a catch and shoot three from the corner. And the very last clip here, again, we're going here. One to five to three. Back to five. Isolation. Finish. Now, that's a little bit extra there, guys. That's that's what you're going to pay some big money for. That's what we call our big wave action. It's a one, five, three, back to five, split sprint, ISO go. And, again, what you're seeing there is just simple cuts, simple, simple cuts that allow your players to get gaps, move in the offense, 0.5 decision-making, um, and, and, and give them opportunities to get to get to the rack. All right, guys, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go through some of these. Some of these are, let's see, let's bring us both up here. So Kurt, if you see anything, tell me, pause it. You want to add anything? Let me know here. Okay. Sure. So we're both on the same screen. I don't have to toggle between anything. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing all the action, all the comments. I'm seeing everything all at once here. So um, for for us, if the one has the ball, this is a loop. And early on, we would call this a five loop. If I would want the point guard to do it, a one loop would be one would pass to the five and then he would, he would go through. So a loop for us just creates that big triple gap that Kurt was talking about. 
and we're playing off of this. It's just an action to play off of it. That's a call. Now, how do I determine when to call this? I'm looking at defense. They're starting to learn. So if five's already ahead of them, he may have cut through already. We don't want – we want to – and we really didn't talk about it a lot. You want to start your offense with a one-guard front. You really do not want to just drive with two guards. It, it, it's a four-out offense, but you really want to send a cutter or pass and cut unless your player can definitely beat them off the dribble. And it takes a pretty special – players to be able to just go in trend immediately. Usually you have to do some sort of action to get this going. Okay. That's a loop. That's a shortcut. Here's a long cut. Typically do this versus switching or pack. So now instead of cutting out to the 45, they're going to cut to the other corner. Two's lifting. And here's the tough part to teach guys Two getting all the way. And I didn't diagram it fully. Five needs to get to here for the correct spacing to have our, what we talked about day one. I'm just going to review that real quick. Balls in the rack zone. You got to have someone fill the 45. You got to have someone fill the, the drag area, strong side corner, weak side block. So that's something you really need to drill and hammer home. I do have a clip of this. This is my team running it here. Okay, so we're out of transition. He's ahead. He, he sees there's no gap, so he cuts. So there's a lot of action here, guys. So we spaced it. We didn't have anything. They cut on their own. That's a read saying he doesn't have, he's not attacking. I need to create a gap. Triple gap is now set, but my player is playing east-west. He does not fight it. He's a little outside where we want him to be. It becomes a kick up or like a DHO, and he went east-west. Ten is too low, should be higher, so that that player cannot be digging in and taking away his drive. 35 stayed patient, reads, hugger defense. Our post is kind of in the way here. He's not cleared and he's not elevating. So like we talked about, nothing's ever perfect, but we still get a drop. They slide over. We hit a drift pass for a wide open three. Now there is a question here. I'll, I'll go over it right now. What are your rules for getting back on defense? If it's my team and that's a corner three for this guy, for this guy gets back, corner should be getting back, and these three players should be crashing. So if the ball is free throw line below when we shoot, shooter and furthest guy get back. If it's if it's shot above the free throw line, the other four guys crash, and one guy and the shooter gets back. That's how I get back. But I always. But I typically, when I'm doing this fully, press on makes and misses. So it all depends on your defensive philosophy. I think Kurt will agree. There's no right or wrong answer of how you really want to do it. And there's a lot of new different things to look at with your defensive transition now. A lot of people talking about tagging up. A lot of guys wanting to try to press on makes. You know, how to do that. I think it's, it's ultimately, if you're going to do something – there you know, commit to it and, and spend time on it and you'll be good at it. So now these are my triple gap sets off of their calls. We may want to get the ball to a certain player. There are three digit numbers for triple gaps for us. So a four fifteen means we're in a four out alignment, one to five pass. Okay. It's a little bit quick on the diagramming here. One can do a shortcut, he could do a blur, he could do a long cut, whatever you want him to do out of this action, they can. And it puts X2 in that tough spot right there. Am I going to help? If I help, it's an easy pass. So that's a big triple gap. That is a core, core action. 
all the way back to 2005, right, Kurt? That people have been. <laughs> That's yeah. that's that's probably the original entry right there. Four fifteen, we call that five hundred. Again, I've developed my own language, and again, it's it's something that you guys. I think it's important to whatever offense you run, is to create a language that makes sense to you, your players, and go from there. Okay, this this action right here, guys, is you're just driving, driving, not getting much. Maybe you want to get some ball movement. Maybe you have your three man is a great penetrator. And you want to move him instead of being on the corner of the wing. You want to get him up at the top to do a middle penetration or a lane penetration. So a two five three would be we elevate the two, we pass, we fill opposite, swing swing, and now five can either through cut or loop cut or blur cut. Too many cuts for us to go over tonight um, and different things. We go over that in the course. And if you missed out on day two, we'll briefly hit on the course and an offer for you guys if you'd like to take a deeper dive into the dribble drive with us. Mark, could you talk to him just briefly about when sure. you say blur cut and, and kind of what the, the theory was early on about, you know, like bumping the defender and then, you know, hands up, offensive fouling, and that kind of stuff? So if X3 was like more tight here, not sagging, and – Five would just run through with their hands up right there, and then this player would look to drive off of that. So it creates that little bit of indecision. It's great against switching. It's it's great against um, pressure. I probably wouldn't do that blur versus a pack. I would do cut. <laughs> Take that player off the nail. Is that hopefully that is that good? Okay. Now, so 253 was, was that. Let me show it one more time for you guys. So boom, boom, boom. And now, guys, I didn't diagram it out fully, but if you would like to just the number, say the numbers are flipped. So say you want your two-man to get the ball up top. Then you would just either have the five-man enter it or the one can bring the ball up the left side of the floor and the player in the right corner now can run this action. So now if that's a lefty guard that Kurt likes in that spot, now that gets him in this angle as opposed to the wing off of a kick up. So it's moving your chess pieces around and saying, hey, certain somebody cannot guard. So we want to get them the ball. Now this one is the same action. But the difference between two five three and one five three for me is, is one a shooter, is two a shooter. If one is actually playing your point guard spot and a better shooter than two, I would run one five three. If two is the better shooter, I would run two five three, and I'll explain why. Because on this pass, we need to get back to spacing. So watch one now. Two cut through off the push entry, push into a dribble entry. One is now in that corner. So now one is the player that is in your shooting spot off a triple gap. Right here, guys, I, I put a poll in the other day about what do people run end of game situations. I'm seeing high ball screen, one four flat. But in my opinion, the best action that you can get into dribble drive is a great, a great attack guard right here in the slot area with the with the with this big old gap. Because it puts this defender on an island. The way analytics, we talked about it the other night. I think I play defense this way. I think Kurt probably plays this defense this way. This guy drives here, no help corner. We stay home. We bl we bluff and stay, and we help we help from this player, and play help the helper and make them have to throw that pass. That's how I guard it. I mean, that's the main way. NBA is not going to give corner help, so that if they're not giving corner help, that should be a rack for your player. And now it puts the post defender in that spot. 
don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole there, guys. But here is another triple gap action for you off a of dribble entry. We've been going right all night. We've been going right. This one I really like to open up a big gap, something different, really good against pressure. This one's great for you against pressure. Dribble wing. So two fills the other corner. Five comes over, fills the one spot. Three fills five spot. He's running. Three is coming out of that corner, running with their hands up, going, ball, 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 decoy, decoy, decoy action. They're not yelling decoy. Plants his foot at about the volleyball line, hard back door cut. So now look here again. You have two should probably be more right here. You got five. And you got this big gap because four's getting ready to relocate on the ball. Okay. So that's that huge gap right there. Okay. My animation's real fast on this one. Let me put it at tortoise speed. That's a cool feature too, Kurt. See the, the tortoise, the rabbit, or the tortoise, the... Rabbit, and I don't know what the other one is. It's another rabbit, but you could change the speeds of the animation and how it shows. <laughs> yeah, I see that. That's pretty cool. Um, the other one, guys, so let me show it to you if you want to run it to get a right-hand drive. So you come up the left side, same actions. There's your back door cut. Two should be lower in the corner. I didn't draw it correctly. One has to fill that back door cut. And again, guys, we harped on it day, night one. One last time, if you get to the rack zone area, 45 filled, drag filled, opposite filled, corner filled. They're in perfect spacing. So if, if he's guarded there, he knows he can throw here. Here is where he should look. If he does not shoot that shot, he should look for those two players. If you're throwing it here that late, you're going to get away with it a bit. But if that's your habit, I think your offense is going to bog down. Okay, Kurt's actions here, rocket. So we're going to show it going the other way here. So it's flattening the defense here. And then there's a kickback. So off of that, we play basketball. So now, it's, now it becomes what are the rules of the offense? Where did the ball hit? Where did the pass go? And we play off of that. It's movement. It created gaps. And I think you need that if you're just if you're just trying to play it's your man point guard and you're playing against a better opponent that night, you need this stuff in. If you're not putting it in. So let me go the, the way Kurt has it here, and then I'll show it the other way. I think Kurt primarily runs it to the three side on this, don't you? to get a right-hand drive because we we play – you're on mute, Kurt. Oh, yeah, I just – sorry about that. The dogs were barking. Um, it's okay. You know, just – they moved it. You know, we, we typically we're coming up the right side of the floor 70% of the time. We'll, we'll nail cut, move it out from, from the other side. But we have such a dominant five-man right now that, that most things initiate that way. Now, Kurt, is this about right here? Is this where you would teach? And I is about when they're getting in here. This is where two should probably decide whether he's going to do that or this. Yeah, and and usually you could tell if three gets flattened out a little bit, meaning that that X three does a good job defensively. Um, you know, Vance used to call this a drop thirty two at this point, um, where if three man gets flattened out by a good defender, they stop the drive. Um, three man might get over to that elbow ish drop zone. We talked about last night and you might get a drop two out of this. And that to us would be a drop 32, three to two. And Vance would kind of run that in the flow of the offense. That was kind of some of his first flow stuff was to me. And I don't think he, he called it flow, but to me, it was kind of like you're running the offense and a, a, a wing drive got flattened out, but essentially we're trying to get paint touch score um, if, if three gets really deep, you're probably looking to get a window three at that point. If they get flattened out early, you're looking to get a drop two, which is a back door for the two. 
So right there for me, that would be a good shot, even though they're not all the way to the rack. They can get into this area, and they're good at a pull-up or a floater game. Or they're reading, did X5 help? We kick the five. And then we find out organically it flows into dribble drive. Then you're getting the long closeouts, short closeouts. Let's take a couple clips here because it doesn't look exactly like my diagram. We don't get the layup, but we flow in and get great dribble drive concepts after this. There's your one to five to three. Kurt talks about it. We got leveled off. So he did not turn the corner, guys. He got leveled off. So he's looking at, and this is, guys, I'm going to do another plug. What I love about Luceo is I'm in Luceo right now with the video attached, and I'm telestrating right over with an iPad. So I can have this at practice, whatever. So now he reads, he's reading them. So we would, I would consider that flat coverage. That's kind of flattish coverage, even though their butt isn't to the baseline. I would call that flat coverage if I'm teaching my team, saying, hey, they're guarding flat. So my play, he's, he's watching. So let's get to it again. Watch on the pickup. Some, some crucial teaching points. He's starting to gather. He went a little early, but he's, he, I think if you're just waiting always like the old school pick it up, it's too late and, and your offense might bog down. So it's almost now making a read and saying, okay, he's leveled. He's picking it up. He needs help. So they're in indecision mode here, right? There's two guys technically on the ball. My player fills the corner. Post relocates. Okay. Off two feet. So now this player in the 45 is not where he should be. We're not perfect on offense. But we get the middle penetration rack dump. That's a dump right to the big. So on this possession, one more time, it's just full speed. One to five to three to two. Everybody touches it on this possession leads to a layup. You don't always see that in dribble dry. That's a unique possession where all five players um, touch the basketball. And that's just a simple, what Kurt calls swing, swing attack. So that's, or pass, pass attack, whatever term you want to use there. I would probably call that swing, swing attack. And then here is another clip of us doing it without the one to five to three. We just went straight pass. And got into it. He got leveled again. He hesitated. May have got away with the walk there, guys. So uh, the next one, people have asked about um, incorporating screens and ball screen actions. This is a this is a set out of an ATO triple gap. I put my shooter in the low block. Five is actually my post player. I, I mix, mixed up the numbers here. Four is the stretch or the or the other attacking guard. So five is the post. It's a it's an ATO special here. So we go a ram screen, meaning screen down into another action. He's gonna act like a ball screen, and this is like that blur thing that Kurt was asking me to explain. So they're not gonna stop here, they're gonna brush cut and then depending on whether you're five out. Four out, you can put five right there on the block. And then once that happens after the blur, two should come back in the six. So if one gets there, if you're five out, you might put them there. If you're four out, you put them there. So that's just a quick hitter there for you guys um, that I like. This one here, we don't run it on the video exactly how it's diagram. It's kind of Kurt, what were you calling this? The push with the yeah, you kind of want to push a player out of the corner. They can go to the opposite corner. They can come to the top. Why well, have that cut. jet cut action? So yeah, that's a loop there. Um, this is a Nate Oates special, guys. Um, credit where credit's due. I saw it from Nate Oates. So it's a pin down here, and he's more five out ish. So you can mess around with who your pin down guy is. 
It's a zipper action on the fly to this ball. Diagonal cut through to create your big gap. Let me get the screen a little bigger there for you guys. Big gap, and now you're just in the dribble drive concepts. Okay? So here we are here. We're not going to get that great layup opportunity off the zipper, but here's the zipper screen, and my post player was already there, so he's clearing. So we didn't run it exactly how I diagrammed it, but my trail set the screen. There's your zipper. Post is clearing to the corner. We got a gap. They helped quick, so that's a kick down. Kurt talked about a kick down. That's a kick down. He did not like. So he attacks the long closeout. And now we have a kickback. And we have them in, I'll use some terminology, some hip words, dominoes. So we got them scrambling. Straight line, straight line drive. Boom. And if you saw there, we were in, we were more in a five out. He stayed in that block, saw that, and now we're in a five out alignment because he flared out to the corner. My post went to the corner and 23 could shoot it a little bit, so we didn't mind him on the perimeter. So let me show you guys that full speed there. So this is a call. We called it zipper. I had a series of these, but this was our main one. And it just flows in the dribble drive. One of the things I love about dribble drives, you can take your sets. They don't work perfectly. Flow it. Uh, my bad. I did a uh, – so what did I have? Zipper there was the last one, guys. Yeah. Okay, so now the, here's, here's another screen down into a ball screen action. So why would you screen down? To, to prevent them from hedging um, so that they can't hedge this ball screen. So here's a screen down. Two came a little early, guys. Sorry, diagrammed it bad. So now it's a middle spread ball screen action that flows straight into dribble drive. So five rolls in, and he's going to be dunker spot. Fill behind there. So I mixed up my numbers there a little bit. Numbers don't matter. But here is this team running it here for us. Hesitation dribble, left-hand drive. So one more time on the video here, we'll show it for you. So she's going to go. Look at the – Kurt talked about angle of the screen here. Here's your screening action. This player's filling to the corner. Okay, a little bit further back here. Let's I me. Mean, I'm going to get to the end here and show you guys again. They took a set, but they know their dribble drive motion penetration rules. That's not stopping for me. Okay, she's landed in the hoop. Stop. Okay. So she's in rack zone, opposite block filled. This player right here probably should be here so that she could see her good. This player's in good spot here. So their spacing is fairly good, not perfect, but what they get? They got the layup because they created a gap. Okay, so now these are taking two concepts. A through cut with the ball screen. We got asked questions last night. Can you, can you do ball screens? Well, for me, this is called through fist. A fist for us is go set a ball screen by our big. So this is just footers. There's the through cut right into the ball screen. Okay. Some of you guys might question that shot. It's deep. That's my best player. We're going to let him shoot it. Okay, so we have a through cut. So we got a triple gap set up, but we're also adding the ball screen here. 
So he, he read a soft, flat, you're not aggressive enough, shoot it. Okay, so here's another one, same kid against the same team. So a through cut, drop coverage. That's how we added ball screens. We That's simple, simple. Here's another. This is a social media post. If you're following me at Coach Mark Hart, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we ran this team. We called it Pitch Fist. Our, our kickback call this past season was Pitch, so they know – to drive middle and throw a back pat. So on this, it's going a little fast. We go pitch and then we just throw it. On this action, depending on who our players were, we would either ghost it, slip it, or set it based upon who the player was. Uh, number 12 who shot it in the previous, previous video is the player coming off of this. So he acts like he's gonna set it and he slips because they may switch this and we want to throw back to him in the corner for a jump shot. So that creates, if you guys, this doesn't necessarily create a triple gap, but there's a double gap right there, right there to get through. Now this is us running it in the game. Okay. And if big thing is you don't always go straight downhill. He hesitates hesitates, hesitation dribble, then blows by. Um, Kurt talked about it. So if you're watching a lot of these videos with that kid going left, that was a lefty playing the two side. <laughs> so you can see why he had the advantage going left hand there. KG special, coach, what do you call this? Five of X? Uh, yeah, we've, we've kind of changed our terminology at the college. We used to call it 1X, 4X. If you go, you search at YouTube, you can find it. It's been 1C, 5C for us. 1C is the 1 to the corner. 5C is the 5 to the corner, and that's what you've got right there. Okay, well, I wanted to show it um, going up the left side of the floor, guys, because a lot of times we're always going right side. Plays are universal. You can run them to both sides of the floor. I think Kurt refers to this as his vertical series as well off of it. So it takes a play off of Tex Winner's triangle action when the ball goes to the corner and then flowing into dribble drive. We're going to show you in the animation what, what it should probably get you as a pick and roll coming off of that corner. where the. So we're going to go elevate. So honestly, kids kids do not look at this good enough. First option's five coming off this shuffle, a little brush screen. Could be open for a layup. Then it's a ball reversal, ball reversal, ball reversal. And now it is. This is the text winner part. Back screen, potentially for a layup into a ball screen and it flows into dribble drive if they don't have anything. Here is a school running it. Okay. So you can go over or under based upon the defense, but that's that's a layup opportunity potentially. And now here's your ball screen where they just kind of don't even really use it, but it's going to flow right into dribble drive. I see a three-day challenge, people. Let's see. I want to see in the comments. What is this action that they use? What action is this that they used? Let us know what that action right there was. I'm going to... I'm going to look and see if I can get anyone to comment and let me know on that on that backdoor pass, what is that action called? See if anybody – see if we got to – I want to bring up the comments, see if anybody knows what that is, what this action's called when this girl stops 
right there and throws that pass. Oh, we got, we got, we got a winner. <laughs> there it is. So it's, it's not just coming down the court and saying drop two. They ran an entry and it organically became the offense. I really wanted to show that. It, and now that it was a drop two to a drift is what I would refer to that as. The only thing I would, that they didn't do a great job was filling behind here for a safety valve off the penetration. Other than that, that's a hell of a possession. I mean, that's, that's, that's dribble drive at its finest right there. Running the entry, running some flow. They took it away. I'm A to Z, so I won't answer Jacob Parr. <laughs> He's team A to Z, so I, he, he won't answer. But thank you. There we go, Patrick. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, but that's my that, that's what I got for you guys for sets and entries. Kurt had it there. That was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 ways or more tonight that we showed you to create a gap. So let's look at them. Um, before we get to questions here, um, I would like to, for people that did not get a chance to see this last night, I would like to quickly go over this if you're not if you're not on team A to Z yet or or in the A to Z family yet. So we put together a package that me and Kurt have done. Me and Kurt did this course a year ago. It's 12 chapters of instructional content video on a Zoom session that we conducted live over six weeks. We did two sessions a night a week with coaches. And it's 19 hours of video and it's the bread and butter of what we, of, of, of this bundle and what we show. We just showed you over three nights, Kurt, would you say primarily that was only chapter one? Yeah, just, just a tiny <laughs> bit of, of, a versus pack line, a versus like tiny, like like a snippet. We talked a little okay. bit about that. We 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 there, there's a couple advanced concepts in there, but but yeah, just just tiny snippets of of what we were able to, uh, you know, create yeah. in 20 hours and with a book and all that great stuff. So real fast for you, recapping the 12 chapters. Chapter one is how to implement the DDM. You'll get what we kind of showed here but also six days, a six day template of what I showed of how I implement it. So day one, I do this. Day two, I do this all the way up to day six. Chapter two is practice planning for a two hour practice, a day before a game practice, out of season practice. Any other ones did we go over, Kurt, in that? Or was that, oh, if you had like 10, like if you had, no, that was in the drills, but. Any other things major in the practice planning? No, not that I, you know, I, I think there was just so much content there as far as how to put together a plan and where you position your transition stuff, where you place your breakdown drills. Cause I think depending on where you're at in your DDM evolution, you know, you could be heavy on the breakdowns and light on the five on five. You could be the other way where you're, you're kind of more advanced and you're going there. So we presented a lot of different ideas for where you're at in your DDM journey. Chapter three, we go over the core 45, daily 45, Vance's 45, but then our own spin on it and our own special drills and different things that we've done. Chapter four through seven takes you through all the various ways that they can guard this offense and what our suggestions and our ideas are to do it. Chapter eight is, hey, coach, I have two posts. I have five guards. I want to add ball screens. I, I can't fully run it the way it was designed, but I love the concepts and I want to teach it. And I don't want to change my system from year to year. It helps you go through some tweaks and some ideas. Chapter nine takes it to Kurt. I'll let you explain on that one. Takes it to a higher level of cuts and, and more philosophy of the offense, right? Yeah. It really takes you 
you know, beyond that, just, okay, I'm going to give it to my guy and let him go. It, it gives you not just the cuts like we talked about tonight, not just the gaps, but we're talking some, some advanced actions that includes ball screens, uh, some of the corner action that we talked about, some throwback action that we never touched on here that's unique, some, some corner drives that's a little bit unique to somebody dribble drive. Uh, and, and really gives you a leg up on on some of the, um, you know, because the, the guys will say, well, am I just going to run offense all the time? Well, there's some flare screens in there for three, and and, and haven't been around along. A couple of the flare screens in that action is some of the very best stuff you'll see to get yourself a three-point shot. So we're, we're throwing the kitchen sink at you in that advanced section. Uh, chapter 10, how to use a talented big man. So on the block – and in a five-out DHO modern style of basketball, involving them into ball screens and actions. That's that chapter. Um, chapter 11 is a biggie. Sideline out of the bounds sets that can flow in some, some OBs. And my favorite, how to attack a box in one and triangle in two. Um, and then some tip plays. Kurt's, Kurt has some great tip actions. Play, basically taking you from the tip off to end of game situation and 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 how they can guard it chapter 12 we had a, had a friend of ours a buddy of ours uh doc shepler uh help us on that on this chapter talk about how to develop dribble drive so he's on in that chapter if you don't know doc i think he either won his sixth or seventh state championship this year um in california at pinewood high school so he came in and helped us out for a chapter, and we we have some practice plans type stuff, some ideas for out of season player development in chapter twelve. So so you get all that in the bundle, and then we threw in some bonuses. The five hundred and forty pages of of diagrams and notes from the course. So if you just got the course, you wouldn't get the notes and the diagrams. You would have to diagram it out, take notes yourself. We're going to throw that in. I threw in my high school ebook that I created about eight to 10 years ago that I think you could just hand it to a youth level, even sixth grade to eighth grade in your lower level teams and say, here's your, here's your template. This is what I want you to do. And you'll have a very functioning dribble drive. Chap, uh, bonus number three is, I did a five out uh, course that's about two hours of content and go over how I manipulated the dribble drive into a five out with layers, with some game footage of, out of the transition in game, out of the half court, quick hitters, my favorite five out sets. Kurt, you want to tell them about your transition A to Z real fast? Yeah. Transition, it, it, it covers your – your Wahlberg stuff in there, but it also does some of the very best stuff that I did in my time. Uh, you know, I was at Oregon city high school for, for, for 15 years, 18 years. And um, I was able to, to kind of develop from, from learning from Brad Smith, some of the very best transition drills you'll ever see. And they all fit great with dribble drive, even included in that is, is running groups. And if you're a high school guy and you haven't heard of running groups yet, I would, I would challenge you to watch that because it will change your program. It will revolutionize what you do every single day, and it will make your players better and give them a week, and they will be better players when they run that stuff. And so that's all my very best transition stuff. So number five, DDM three-day challenge replays. So all the content that we went over for these three days, the diagrams, the notes, or the slide presentation part is going to go in this bundle. I'm going to edit out this portion on day two, day three, and it's going to go into your bundle. You're going to, it's going to be inserted into the A to Z course as a bonus. Uh, team A to Z that have already purchased it, it's going to be in there for you in the next couple of days. So when you go and look in your course, it's going to say bonus day one, day two, day three from the DDM three-day challenge. We're going to put that in even though you've already purchased your course. We're going to add that for you. We take care of our A to Z members. Lastly, we started a private Facebook group just for the A to Z group. We do have our dribble drive motion hoop talk group, but just for our A to Z member group, we, we, we host 
some film studies. There's questions and answers in there, maybe about the course, some clarification. And I've been putting up drills because at the time of, of when we shot this, we were in COVID. So we weren't on court. So it was hard for us to get on court footage. So me and Kurt have been starting to put some of the footage of practice clips and stuff like that into the Facebook group. So recapping real, real quick for you. You're looking at 19 plus hours of X's and O's on the dribble drive motion offense, the playbooks, the diagrams, the Facebook group, and the bonus videos. It's going for $99 through Sunday night. What you are getting is the course. It's valued at $199. We don't charge that normally for it, but I think it's worth every bit of that. The course book is not that. It's $69. It's $69 value. It's not that on the website. My five out DDM is listed as 20. Kurt's transition is listed at 20. We haven't even put a dollar value on what we did, but I think for three hours worth of what we gave you, it's probably worth $37. And I don't, I can't put a price on the Facebook group. If you add up all those, all that value, you're getting that for, for $99. So I'm going to throw in, in the link for you guys. I'm going to, Throw this in if you want to take advantage of that bundle price. It's not on the website. You can't just go to it right now and find it. That's a special link for the system challenge bundle. I'm going to go put it in the dribble drive motion group as well. So there's the bundle. There's the links. And then last thing I'm going to show you, and then we'll take a couple questions. Some questions is I'm going to show you. We lost you, Kurt. Lost your picture. It's okay. All right. So this would be this would be if you clicked on what I just sent, this shows you what's included. So if you went to the our website, my website, and, and clicked on this separately, that would be $39. The course A to Z by itself is $99. The ebook is $15.20. 20. So again, if you go and look at the, the, the core item, the A to Z course, this is what's going to be in the course right here. When you get logged in, this is the contents. Chapter one is an hour and 37 minutes. Chapter two is an hour and 47. Chapter three, almost two hours. Pressure defense is an hour and 25 minutes. Pack line was 40 minutes. Switching was an hour and 10, zone, hour and 20. The variation chapter is an hour and 30. Advanced dribble drives, an hour and 45 minutes. How to use talented big men, an hour. Special situations, an hour. The player development was two hours. And then you can listen in on the live film review that we did with the members that joined us live. Here's where your bonuses will be. Here are extra notes that we have put in with some practice plans, some shooting drills, and then the Facebook group as well, guys. So it, it's a comprehensive course with over 20 hours and over 600 pages of content. So that's our, that's our bundle that we have put together for you guys. So if you want to accept the DDM challenge and join us and join the A to Z family, uh, we'd love to have you guys. I join us and be a part and, and, and take care of it, uh, take advantage of this deal through Sunday night. Before we answer questions, as far as replays are concerned, watching day two, day one, day two, day three, it'll be up in the Facebook group and YouTube through Sunday, and then I'm taking them down. So if you'd want access to the replays, you can get the bundle. And, and have that as well. It's included in the $99 package. Let's see about questions here. Let's go. Let's go, Phil. How often, if at all, do you guys run the blood drills? You want to go first on that one, Kurt? Sure. In high school, early season, we ran quite a bit. And, you know, it, it's to me, it, it's the, the blood 
you know, Vance called it blood. I can't remember all the numbers Vance used. I changed the name to attack as a high school coach because I didn't want to use blood uh, all the time. But we would run the blood 22, the two-on-two version, as a tryout drill. Um, I, I don't think there's a better tryout drill for your guards than that one. Uh, and then we would the 3 3 Then we started would go 44 in the half court, going one way only when you had your varsity only. In high school, I often had three teams, my 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 top two groups, and then a, a JV group, and I felt like I was able to develop my talent much better that way. That way, I was pushing them, but pretty often, you know, it, it got to 22, 33, 44. You got to have some bodies. If you don't have the bodies, you can go one way a little bit and do it with like a cutthroat four on four on four. Uh, if you can't go both directions. But pretty often, I think taking the bump is the biggest thing. And if you can just find ways to teach them to take a bump, whether it's half court or full court, I think that was the beauty of the blood was the physicality, the teaching of the relocation. But you can tweak it a little bit. You can make it be more half court-ish if you want it to go one way. But uh, pretty often in high school, college, uh, we, we're, we're probably going one way 99% of the time just because of the numbers, we're only at, you know, 10 to 15 on our roster each and every year. So we're going one way with those. Okay. So um, I'll answer it. If it's, if it's year one and it's your first time putting them in, I think they're crucial. I do them almost every day. Um, but as, as you're hitting maybe the league part of the season days before games, I probably wouldn't hit, all of them, maybe I'd maybe do a couple of them to save legs because they can be kind of taxing on you throughout the season and you can get beat up on those, on those drills, but as much as you can put them into decision-making and playing and getting them used to playing at the speed, going through the, the, the blowout zone that we talked about on night one, I, I use them. I think over the last few years, I've gotten away with it, gotten soft with it because I thought it beat up my players a little bit and, we didn't have that toughness factor of getting to the rim. We wanted to settle for threes. I think it, it really, it really develops toughness. So um, let's see any other question. Let's hide that one. This is just a comment running groups and transition stuff is amazing for practice too. I just don't have enough players for running groups. Even with any, is there any way that, is there a minimum number or, Kurt well, you know, really, if you truly do running groups, um, 18 is a great number, three teams of six. Um, and if you go to my YouTube channel, you can watch it. I did it with an eighth grade, seventh grade group many years ago. It's it's a rough copy, but you can look at it and watch it. That's your minimum. If, if you can't do it, you can modify a little bit with some five on O to five on five, five on O, five on three, five on O, five on four. Um, it's such a unique animal. It's almost hard to describe. <laughs> it's almost its own zoom session in and of itself talking about running groups. Um, but it's, it's one that really guys, it really just teaches your players, the mental transitions going from offense to defense, um, being able to, to work our press, our press break, our aggressive mindset, our dribble drive offense, our transition offense, your umbrella defense, your press defense. It was just really multifaceted. I would encourage you to look at that. Uh, on the on the YouTube, and if it intrigues you, uh, that's just another bonus in the bundle that Mark's throwing up there. Because it, to me, running groups itself is worth. If I'm a high school coach, it's worth five thousand bucks. And I know you're thinking I'm crazy when you say that, but mm -hmm. if you watch what we did in Oregon City, and we won twelve state championships in seventeen years, um, and you asked us, because I think there's the old coaching saying that, okay, if I walk into your practice and I watch for half an hour. I need to see what you are, right? Okay, and, and you always hear that. Uh, I would tell you that, that running groups was who we are, and that's how we play. And we played that way every day, and we played that way every day for 45 minutes to an hour and 15, building our, our conditioning, building our transition, building our mental. I think if you read, if you study the brain and how it works, we need to build the myelin in our brain that allows us to transition from one thing to another. And on the women's side, if you coach the women's side, there's not a ton of, of just random play for girls when they're young. They don't just go out to the playground and play around. I don't know if anybody does anymore, but the idea in running groups, it's really just controlled scrimmage and it avoids that scrimmage. That's just garbage where we're just running around. Everybody's tired running groups are these little 40 second bursts of energy and uh, effort 
and it allowed us to be um, the team that we were for a long time at the high school level. And, and again, I wish I could get a, it's a little harder at the college level. We have to try to get a third team. that's like a men's group, um, but we can't do that quite as easily as, as, as we would like to every single year. Coach Schneider, if you can do this real quick, is it six days a week of practice? Is it a high school team? Is it a club team? What what type of practice do you have? That'll help me answer the question a little bit more. If it's high school, uh, if you do the daily 45s and then another segment of breakdown drills a little bit. So if you're if you have a two-hour practice, I'd be spending in probably an hour, hour and 10 minutes on the drills. The drills themselves help install the offense. You could be doing a three on three drill. You could be doing a two on two drill. You're doing the con it's concept. It's conceptual. So it's not a continuity. It's none of that. So you're constantly in um, installing the offense. So if you do the daily 45, I mean, you join the course, the template, of, of six days you're up in there and then it's an evoluting thing based upon, Hey, do I need to work more on rack stuff today? Do I need to work on our drag reads today? Do I need to work on our drop reads? You got any other suggestions? I mean, that's kind of where I would go with it. Yeah. And, and, and just kind of reading it, it, it's, it's hard to tell, but I mean, the whole key is, is, is if it's, it's year one, you know, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to have to be kind of feeling your way through it quite a bit. So Five days, five days a week. Five days a week, though. You know, if you're getting, you know, we were we were six days a week, three hours a day. If you're five days a week, two hours, you you can get a lot done in that time. Being efficient, I think that's what we need to strive for. Is our in our practice planning is to be efficient and what what you want to be great at is what you'll emphasize. So you want to be great in your system at at your at your half court stuff. Um, you know, I th I think that, that that you can dedicate the time. Um, and again, I, I Mark and I both know this. I I think I was a lot of drills early on in my career. And I've gotten a lot more to uh, playing five on five after I've kind of broke it down, play, broke it down, play, and then conceptually playing in our five on five dribble drive. Gotcha. Oh, let's see. Where's that coach at? Case uh, 69. Send me an email about your question and I'll see what I can do. Send me an email. Coach Mark Hart at gmail.com. KSML 69 if you're still on. All right. So that's Justin Snyder. Where is that? Hide it. All right. Yep, you're the assistant coach, so you got to pick. No, no problem, Justin. Do what the boss says. No problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, side note. This side note, I've started implementing three-on-three -three half court with Olympic rules, which is really helping transition from often. Okay. Yeah, and I think that goes to that that brain thing, that they're constantly transitioning from one thing to another. See, that's we love that. Jacob just started in the A to Z group. He's taken what me and Kurt have taught, and he's putting his own twist on it. So – you could take our ideas and it's, it's what I love about the course is we get asked, well, I don't know where I'm at. Well, you may not ever see switching. So you don't need to really study that. But if you, if you know someone's switching, you can go grab that chapter, look at it, look at the book and say, Hey, they're switching. We need to have a couple things in, in case they switch, they're packing, have a couple things in. Look at who plays you the most and wh what you get played the most and have counters to that. Pra at practice, you can say, hey, we're going to play pack today. We're going to play switch today. You do what you do, but your players need – you need you need to have – you could sit and have a practice where switch all interchanges, switch all kickups, switch whatever. You can do that stuff. and But – the, it's a resource. It's something for you to go back and review. You're not going to probably digest all 19 hours of it and understand every nuance of it. But it, it's something that if you're going to put in this system of play, it's a valuable resource. Yeah. 
<laughs> I wish I wish I would have had it when I started in 2008. It would have, I mean, me and Kurt probably spent, I don't know how much time we spent on it, but it was, we've been running, I've been running it 13 years. Kurt's been running it 16 years. So it's, we've seen quite a bit on it. Do we have all the answers? No, we'll be the first person to tell you that. We're lifelong learners ourselves. I know I could see Kurt when I'm saying stuff, even when I'm talking to you guys, he writes down a note. Like, oh, I like that. And he writes it down. We're, we're always, me and Kurt are always striving to learn from people in our course even as well to, to help us teach it better to our players on the court. We, we know it really well. You guys may know it really well. And we may, you, it's just about how you come off and how you can teach it to your players. And you got to feel comfortable. And I don't see anything else. Um, let, let's kind of wrap it up with some some thank yous and 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 so thank you guys for joining us and taking the three day challenge. I hope that you guys learn quite a bit. Replay access will be available through Sunday evening. The offer for the challenge bundle is through Sunday evening, midnight Pacific time. I'll send out emails for people that registered and, and remind you about that. If you just recently signed up with us, which some of you have, then be on the lookout for an email or an invite from Facebook to me to join our A to Z Facebook group. Kurt, got anything? No, just enjoyed the three nights. It was fun fun to dive back in and get back on the Zooms and, and, and check out all the the, the people that are interested. And again, it's, it's something that, like Mark said, we, we don't have every answer. There's always some other question, but I, I really do think the A to Z course covers a whole lot of those things about, you know, going dribble drive, why you would go dribble drive all the way through the complexity of the advanced part versus all sorts of stuff. And, and again, just, just an opportunity to, to share with you guys was a lot of fun. And I, I always try to give back. So shoot us an email, shoot me an email check out our Twitter, check out our YouTube. And I think you'll be uh, pretty confident that we're giving you some good stuff in the A to Z stuff. Thanks, Justin, for joining us. Thanks, Phil. Jacob, both of your responses might have helped a lot. I really only have six full-time varsity players and two goals, so have to be creative. Thank you both for all the time and extra effort. No problem, Jacob. Thank you. Best of luck to you this season. We're here for some support for you. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll probably end up doing another one of these down the road, but um, both of us probably for doing challenges and stuff. We got our season. Kurt, you're in the gym next week, right? I am. We're getting there. We're uh, actually, we've got, we start the 27th of September, so I'm going to start putting up some, some little clips into the A to Z group only. I'm not going to put it in the big group. So I'm only going to keep it to the to the um, A to Z private group as far as guys that are looking for some live footage of some of our breakdowns. And and, and I will I, I promise you I'll put in our four on three paint touch game that will change your oh, dribble drive yeah. offense. And again, I'm not saying it's anything. I, like, I, I just I just I like that one. Turned out. I like that one better than running groups. That's just yeah. Legal. Yeah. Four on three paint <laughs> touch game. It will change your your dribble drive mentality and it will teach you or your players, the shot selection that you need to be successful in your dribble drive. That's the one Jacob needs to look at with his short numbers instead of running groups then, the four-on-three paint touch game. You can do that with limited numbers. That's that's yep. that's a beauty. Um, I start up I start up Saturday. Uh, that's awesome. Switching to, the girl, switching to the girl side, so it's going to be a learning experience, but uh, I, I'm looking forward to that challenge, and I guess – Chapter one was San Dimas High School. Chapter two was Baldwin Park. <laughs> Chapter three was South Hills. Chapter four was uh, Patriot. And now I'm turning the page to chapter five. Uh, haven't been an assistant varsity coach since 2007. Wow. So it, it's going to be be like Kurt, get to sit there and just enjoy it and, and enjoy coaching them. Um, I, I see the passion that he has. I love, I love, I love the Instagram photos last year during your season. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Daughter's coming to tryouts with me. 11 year old daughter is going to be at tryouts. Joe Haig, Joe Haig just sent me a text. KG mm -hmm. four on three paint touch game. 
Gotta love it. He just he, literally it just popped go. up on my phone. So, <laughs> so Joe Hag, buddy of ours, uh, D1 coach. So uh, Joe, Joe, Joe's been tuning in. So appreciate Joe as well. So again, guys, it's been awesome. Do your trademark sign off, Kurt, for me. <laughs> as always, we end it with good luck, coaches. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Be good, Mark. See you, buddy.